Welcome to This Week in Surgery Centers. If you're in the ASC industry, then you're in the right place. Every week, we'll start the episode off by sharing an interesting conversation we had with our featured guest, and then we'll close the episode by recapping the latest news impacting surgery centers. We're excited to share with you what we have, so let's get started and see what the industry's been up to. Hi, everyone. Here's what you can expect on today's episode. We are in the middle of our three-part series on improving patient collections. Last week, we had Sayward Hill on, who talked through how to master eligibility. Today, we were supposed to have a guest on to cover tips for post-data service collections, but unfortunately, due to Hurricane Milton, we weren't able to record. You are stuck with me. I'm going to fill in and still share a handful of post-data service tips that will help you boost patient collections after your patients are discharged. And it is great timing because HST just released our State of the Industry report last month, and we shared a ton of data points, a few of which covered outstanding patient bills post-data service. So I'll weave in that data while going through the tips to help add context. Hope everyone enjoys the episode, and here's what's going on this week in surgery centers. All right, let's get into post-data service collections at a surgery center. So after patients are discharged from your facility, it can be really tricky to continue to collect outstanding balances. It is so tricky that some facilities are actually moving towards policies where they will not proceed with a procedure until the patient's responsibility is paid in full. So let's chat through five tips for improving post-data service collections so that you can get paid for the services you're providing. Now, this first tip is more of just a reminder of best practice, but it's to follow up early and regularly. So one of the most effective ways to improve post-data service collections is to follow up with patients promptly after surgery. Now, this is absolutely a delicate balance because you also need to check on their recovery, which is the primary concern. So perhaps your policies state that within 24 hours, the doctor or the nurse or nurse is going to follow up. But reaching out maybe a week after the procedure allows you to do both. You can check on their recovery again. And if things are going well and it's a positive recovery and conversation, then you can take the opportunity to gently remind them about any outstanding balance. But if they are experiencing any issues during their recovery, then it's maybe not the time to mention their bill. And perhaps that call comes a few days later. And I'm usually all about the automated texts and emails, which we'll get into. But in this case, patients appreciate a personal touch. So a quick call would could really go a long way. The second tip after that initial phone call is to leverage automated payment reminders. So automation tools are invaluable for post data service collections. By setting up automated emails and texts, you can send reminders without placing additional strain on your staff. These reminders should include links to make payments online, making it super easy and convenient for patients to settle their bills. Automated systems can also be set up to trigger different messaging depending on how overdue a payment is. Maybe we have the friendly reminders early on to more urgent notifications as time progresses. And this will also help you maintain consistency, which is key in your follow-up process. So when you're setting up these automated reminders, you can schedule them to go out 15, 30, 45, 60 days after the date of service. And you can also test to see what days and intervals are most effective for you. I spoke with one surgery center who saw a spike in payments when they sent a text reminder on the third Friday of the month. So if you think about it, most people get paid every other Friday, right? So that first paycheck, we all know that's going towards your regular bills, the mortgage, rent, car, insurance, utilities the list is never ending. But that second paycheck is usually extra income to some degree. So people feel less overwhelmed or more willing to pay. So it's things like that that you can test to see if it makes an impact for you. And again, that can all be automated. Also, another reason why offering text or email is so important, in the work that we've done, we found that 30% of patients contacted via text or email will typically pay electronically. So by sending patients a clear snapshot of their costs and giving them a button right on the invoice or whatever tool you're using, you can easily get paid faster and drive payments. The third tip is to offer flexible payment options and counseling. 
So post data service, some patients may find themselves struggling with their financial responsibility. So it's not that they don't want to pay. Maybe they just aren't in a financial situation where they can give over a big lump sum. So offering flexible payment plans allows patients to settle their balances over time rather than requiring that full payment all at once. And by breaking the total into smaller, more manageable amounts, you will reduce the likelihood of non-payment. I always think about, let's say a patient owes $1,000 and you just keep sending them this $1,000 bill. It, it can feel so overwhelming. They'll probably just continue to ignore it if it's not a sum of money that they just have laying around. But if you send them, put them on a payment plan for $100 over the course of 10 months, now that feels much more reasonable, fits into their lifestyle. And even though it takes longer, you still get the money that is owed to you. So it's definitely worth it. The key, though, is, again, is to make it easy for patients to opt into these plans. And going back to the previous tip, make it automated. You can set up plans that have direct withdrawals, so it does not require any manual steps from your side or the patient side. You can also offer incentives to patients who do set up the direct withdrawal, so maybe a 2 to 5% off their total bill or whatever you're able to offer. Just continue to incentivize them. Also, having someone to counsel these patients is key, so make sure your staff is trained to explain the options to them clearly. And by having flexible payment plans or offering, offering various levels of financial counseling, you'll just demonstrate that your ASC is willing to work with them to resolve their financial obligations, which can reduce the risk of sending accounts to collections, while of course improving patient satisfaction as well. And in my prior days, I used to work at a, a very popular patient satisfaction surveying company and the financial questions were always most, if a patient did have an issue at a surgery center, it was mostly related to just not understanding the financial obligations and what they owed and having to get refunds and that part kind of being a mess. So locking in your financial processes will also see an increase, you'll also see an increase on your patient satisfaction surveying scores. And don't forget, you can also leverage third-party RCM companies too. There are so many out there that are dedicated to the ASC space that can help you out. The fourth tip is to monitor and prioritize high-value accounts. So not all overdue accounts carry the same financial weight, so it's important to focus extra effort on those high-value accounts that represent significant outstanding balances. These larger accounts can have a considerable impact on your ASC's overall revenue and cash flow, so they should receive additional attention through targeted follow-ups and personalized outreach. You're going to have patients that might owe you $4,000. You're going to have patients who might owe you $100. They're not all created equal. And again, this should not be a manual process for your team. Your billing software should be able to flag these high value accounts early in the process, which will allow your team to take a more proactive approach. And prioritizing these accounts could mean setting up specific workflows, such as more frequent reminders, dedicated follow-up calls, or even special payment plans. All right, your fifth and final tip is to track payment interactions with transparency. So one common issue in post-data service collections is when patients claim they never received the bill or payment notice. This can be addressed by implementing tracking tools that monitor when a patient views their estimate or invoice. Using software that shows the date and time a patient uh, viewed their estimate will provide clear evidence if a dispute arises. Hopefully it never comes to that, but this visibility allows your team to address claims of non-receipt with transparency and professionalism. Additionally, if you need to send a patient's account to collection, having a detailed communication log that tracks every touch point, whether phone, email, or mail, or text, will help the patient understand why sending them to collections is the only next step that, that you have left. All right, so let's talk about the data regarding post data service collections. So HST just released our state of the industry report, and we pulled data from 590 clients who gave us permission to do so. And those centers span across 47 states and represent nearly 3 million patient visits. Our data analysts determine that on average, ASCs are taking five days to bill after the data service. Taking five days to bill 
does directly impact cash flow and revenue cycle efficiency. Obviously, the longer it takes to submit claims, the longer it takes to receive payment. So reducing the days to bill means quicker payment turnaround for you. The specialty with the longest turnaround time is podiatry, averaging 7.6 days. And then the specialty with the quickest turnaround time is dental, averaging 3.1 days. Now, all of the graphs in our State of the Industry report cover the top 12 specialties. So if you want to see where your specialty falls, I'll include the link to the report in the episode notes. It's also on HST's website under the resources tab. So I do highly recommend checking it out, especially if you want to get into see where your specialty falls. And one thing that was really cool to see when looking at the 2023 numbers compared to 2024, one major win is that every specialty decreased the average number of days it takes them to bill post data service, which is hopefully a trend we'll continue to see hold up in next year's report too. And if you're looking to lower your days to bill, I would recommend developing standardized templates for procedures. So by creating procedure specific templates, staff can quickly fill in the necessary info without missing key details. You definitely want to track incomplete charts. So incomplete charts are one of the biggest delays in the billing process. So you can implement a system to track those charts and flag them for immediate action. Again, you're automating your billing workflow. So ideally your practice management or billing system automates key steps for you in terms of verifying codes, generating claims, and sending them to payers. You also want to cross-train staff, so you want to ensure that the billing process can continue smoothly even if certain team members are unavailable. And then again, for ASC struggling to keep up with their billing, outsourcing RCM support could be a great solution. Now, if we take a look at outstanding patient bills, we do see some interesting trends. Here we're looking at this direct correlation between number of days post data service versus number of days a patient account goes unworked, meaning there's no activity to try to collect. And we found that on average, cases that are 1 to 90 days old are worked monthly. Cases that are 90 to 150 days old are worked every two months. And then cases that are 150 plus days old are worked every two and a half months. And when patient bills go unworked post data service, it just significantly delays that cash flow and increases the risk of those accounts becoming delinquent. A lot of these tips we covered earlier, but just a reminder, prioritize those high value accounts, leverage automation, lean into flexible payment options, incorporate early invention, intervention with phone calls, and outsource if you need to. And if we take it one step further, we see that 70% of AR is greater than 90 days old. And so having 70% of AR over 90 days old could be a serious issue. It impacts cash flow again, reduces financial stability, increases likelihood of bad debt. And this shouldn't be any surprise to any of you, but the longer balances remain unpaid, the harder they become to collect. So a lot of the tips to mitigate this one I've listed already, but I would recommend breaking down your AR into 30, 60, and 90 day chunks. So you're working them in kind of these manageable groups prioritize accounts that are in the earlier stages of aging. So maybe one to 60 days. So you can tackle issues ASAP and just use RCM software as much as you possibly can to help. So there you have it, a bunch of tips and data to help you improve patient collections post data service. Next week, I'll be joined by Marie Yarborough, who is the administrator at Sequoia Surgical Pavilion to finish out our series on improving patient collections. So thanks for bearing with me through this solo episode that officially wraps up this week's podcast. Thank you, as always, for spending a few minutes of your week with us. Make sure to subscribe or leave a review on whichever platform you're listening from. I hope you have a great day and we will see you again next week.